Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Mr. Raider, economics class, and today we're going to be looking at career planning. Uh, specifically, we're going to examine how to write a resume and how to write a cover letter. So for many jobs that are out there in the workforce, they don't necessarily require the resume or the cover letter, but for many, if not all professions, they will require resumes and many of them will also require uh, a general cover letter to introduce yourself to the company and business that you are applying to. So let's get right down to it. So uh, in this lesson, we wanna consider how a strong resume will help you to stand out in a crowd of applicants. So if we're looking at our social studies practices, we're really looking at uh, gathering, interpreting, and using the evidence really of your own uh, past success, whether that be academic success, uh, success on the athletic field, uh, success in a leadership role in a club or organization at the school or something outside of school, a volunteer service, or even additional work experience that you may have prior to this date. So there's two different types of resumes that can be used. There is the chronological resume and the functional resume. Uh, the chronological chronological resume is used primarily for people who have uh, a pretty steady record of work experience. It's not their first time applying for a job. So you would organize all of your past work, volunteer, and academic experiences in a chronological fashion. The question becomes, which one's more useful for a high school student? For the average high school student, it's going to be the functional resume because for many high school students, they have not had jobs before. And it's really good for students who want to focus on their skills and their experiences rather than a chronological work history. And it's used most often by people who are either changing careers or who have large gaps in their employment history or have little to no work history. So let's, let's break down this sample resume. Okay, so here's the context. Mr. Scott is applying for a volunteer position through the Prospect Park Alliance. So it looks like for a volunteer organization. So in the heading, we have the name, the address, a phone number, and an email so that the employer can very easily reference who Mr. Scott is. Uh, in most resumes, you'll have an objective. So you'll clearly state what your goal is, what you would like to uh, express or convey to the employer about why you want that particular position. And you want to make it a statement of action verbs. So it's something to keep in mind when making a resume. You wouldn't necessarily say, I would like to have a volunteer position to give back to my community. You'd want to use a very clear set of action verbs so to obtain a volunteer position. Okay, then you want to explain what your educational background is. So in this case, we have a student who attended two high schools, and they include the dates that they attended those high schools. Uh, after education, they included their work experience. So we have experience as a pet sitter. And notice again, the action verb, provided pet sitting services, including dog walking, feeding, and yard care. And again, the more specific you can be with your resume, the better. Uh, achievements. So we have two achievements, uh, an Ariston National Honor Society and academic honor roll. And again, the years where the student had achieved that objective. Volunteer experience. Now notice again, there's more here. Uh, it could be perhaps there's a lot more volunteer experience than say work experience. Or it could be that because this person is looking for a volunteer position, they want to emphasize the volunteer work that they have done in the past. And again, notice you'll see that there's a title, there's usually a location, and there are dates for when you held that particular position. So if we're looking at the two action verbs here, directed a group of a dozen middle school students, wrote and choreographed a play presented to the, to the entire congregation. Again, it's written in uh, the past tense and in verbs. Interests and activities. Uh, and then skills. So for example, the student may have skills in Microsoft Word, uh, Microsoft Excel, uh, which many of you have the experience using the Google version, the Google Suite version, Google Docs, and Google Sheets. When you put together the uh, survey data for your research and analysis papers as part of the quality of life part of the economics class. So just answer the three questions here, and then we'll take a look at the chronological resume. So a chronological resume starts by listing your work history with the most recent position listed first. They are listed in reverse chronological order. And employers typically prefer this type of resume. It's very easy for them to see what jobs you have held and when. And it's for job seekers with a very strong, solid work history. So in this context, uh, Ms. Holding is applying for a sales associate job at H&M in Midtown Manhattan. Again, you'll notice the same kind of objective is very clearly articulated. 
Uh, notice in this case, they start with employment history. So we see two different jobs that were held in the past. Again, the title of the job, the organization, and the location, along with some clear action verbs to explain what it is that person did in their past job. Education notice is a little uh, less well developed. And again, that's because it is something that this, this person is not really emphasizing. We have their educational background and the degree that they received. So focus questions, again, please go through these three and it'll give you some ideas in terms of things to write. And then your main activity for today is to work on your own resume. So what I'd like you to do is to have an objective, any edu educational experiences you have, work experience, volunteer experience, achievements, and any additional skills you may have that are targeted to a uh, possible future career. Uh, and if you already have a resume, which many of you probably do, uh, access it electronically, uh, open it, copy and paste it here, and make edits based on what you're seeing in this information. So that'll do it for the resume. So we're going to pause for a moment for those of you that want to just do work on the resume. And for everybody else, we're going to take a look at a cover letter, which I'm not going to ask you to write it up for me at all, but it is something for you all maybe to be aware of. It is a useful skill to be knowledgeable about. Okay, so when you write cover letters, you want to ensure that they are very, very targeted to a specific audience. You want the employer to know that you're speaking to them. The purpose of the cover letter very simply is to introduce yourself, uh, to be able to speak more to the information that may not be on the resume. What additional details or things would a, a prospective employer want to know about you? Okay, so what I have here, and this is what I've done in past years when I had more time to do a career uh, development unit with my students when we were in the building, was to kind of consider how do we go from the resume to the cover letter to the interview uh, to job placement. So these are some skills below that employers want to see. Uh, effective communication abilities. So this means, among other things, knowing when to pause when having a conversation, uh, refraining from discussing ideas that are inappropriate for the workforce, but even more importantly, pausing when it makes sense so that you don't have sentences where you go, um, um, so, uh, like, you know, um, like, um, so, like, you know, it's a very uh, basic form of public speaking. Some of you may take it in communication classes in college. It is something to consider if you don't have a thought in your mind, just pause for a minute. This way you avoid the ums, the likes, and so you knows. Uh, it's something you can kind of think about just in terms of regular conversation. Next time you're talking to a friend or a family member, just mentally count. How many times are they saying like in the conversation? One, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. Uh, we want to see in terms of potential employees, the ability to problem solve. So the ability to work on information without a ton of guidance, teamwork skills, leadership, management. And then some personal qualities, they love seeing uh, adaptability and flexibility, the ability to kind of think on your feet, being open to new ideas, having a growth mindset, uh, professionalism, work ethic, and a positive attitude. So what goes into the cover letter? So the guidelines are here, and you can read them by pressing pause on the video now. But in general, you're going to have a heading, an introduction, a body, and a closing. So... Uh, before I show you a sample cover letter, I'm just going to show you a resource for those of you that may be planning on living away from home in your college years. There is one job in particular that tends to be very popular on the campus, primarily because uh, in this job as a resident advisor, you don't have to pay room. And in many cases, they'll have to give you a discounted meal plan or a free meal plan. So you could save thousands of dollars a year. So it tends to be very competitive. Uh, and just some information here that explains what the RA is, what the job description looks like, and kind of breaks down what colleges would want to see in terms of who the RA would be. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to show you is a sample cover letter, and then we're going to call it a day. So here is a sample cover letter I've worked with my students on in past years. Again, when we were in the building, you'll notice there are very clear connections to our school in Bay Ridge. So this is, in, again, in the heading, the potential employee, Jack T. Webster, uh, where Jack lives, Jack's email, Jack's phone number. It includes a date, 
the person that you are writing the letter to, the organization, if they have an official name, you'd want to include that as well as a title. And then you'd want to have a very clear subject. Like, what are you applying for? Uh, in the introduction, you want to explain what you're doing. So in this case, it says, I am interested in volunteering for the Queen's Heels and uh, Wheels group as I'm interested in working with people that have intellectual and developmental disabilities. In particular, I would like to work with young children because I plan to study early childhood education at Hunter College this fall. So you can see there's a very clear connection between what the student, this person is, is volunteering for and the connection to their own career aspirations. The second paragraph speaks to past experiences, in this case, working at the neighborhood key food supermarket as a cashier and connection spending time on the school's varsity baseball team. So again, it gives you some ideas. It connects the past experience to what a potential employer or recruiter would want to see from their employees. Okay, so this will uh, conclude this lesson on resume and cover letters. I hope you all learned something valuable and that you can use this as you move out of high school and move on to your college years. All right, everybody, have a great day.